welcome to Weld.com this morning. I'm here with my friend, Mr. Saw Bladehead, and we're going to build a material rack for the lab here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use two and a half by four inch by three sixteenths carbon steel I beam. We're going to make a square frame, and then we're going to put a couple uprights on it, and we're going to connect a couple I beams to the uprights to hold the material. So what we're going to use for our rod and wire is a Bowler Diamond Spark 46 MC metal cord wire. It's E70C-6M H4, and it's 045 diameter. And the AWS spec is A5.18. And then on our main structural pieces, we're gonna use a Bowler Fox EB50. It's an E7018-1 H4R rod with 332 diameter. And the AWS spec is A5.1. Oh yeah. And we're, of course, we're gonna use the nice tab and slot tables, which work really good to do our fabrication and hold it square. And for power source, we're gonna use our Everlast Power Eye MIG 315, which is MIG and stick. So when we get into the stick, we'll switch it over and I'll show you how to adjust it and everything before we get started on tacking it up and then weld it out. Let's get to it. It's looking really good. We got it clamped all down and now we're gonna tack the corners to keep it all square. So now that we have all four corners tacked, we're gonna cross hatch measurement to make sure that it stays square. Good to go. So now that we have everything squared, we're gonna put some temporary braces in here to hold it while I'm welding to make sure it stays square. So Paul, you got the cross beams on, that's gonna help against that twisting, but what's the next step? We're gonna take these chalks and put them inside the beam to the other beam and weld them all the way out. So I want to talk a little bit about the Everlast Power Eye MIG 315. It's a great machine. We've got it set up just for MIG right now, just for tacking like we said earlier in the video. But as we go on, we're going to switch it over to uh, stick. So what we have it set on is MIG. And what we have is, of course, you got a MIG stick set up, which you got set on MIG. This, your, this is your MIG volts, which is your, here's your MIG meter voltmeter and then then we have a mig mig stick arc force which is set about two so then we go over here to the wire feed and we got it set on 274 and it also has two other features that are pretty neat it has a spot weld and it also has a stitch weld which is a pretty neat feature for this kind of machine so when we move on to the stick, I'll show you how I set up the machine for the stick. So what we've got, we've got our first plate clamped in place, and we're gonna do this on all four corners to tie both eye beams in. And when we get them all tacked up on all four corners, I'll proceed to weld them out. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna weld up both these verticals here on this plate and then I weld the top, and then I weld the bottom. Then when I got done welding all four corners of the outside, I'll go on the inside and weld that vertical up on the opposite side, right where my finger is. I'll weld that vertical up on the inside, do all four. Then we'll come out, come back out, and uh, take these clamps off, and I'll put a little V-groove in the top of these I-beams and uh, proceed to weld them out too. So, you know, welding an SMAW in a vertical up position, you know, you need to have your angle of rod slightly angled down and pushing the rod into the metal as you're welding, touching both sides, making sure the puddle is tying into both pieces you're adjoining. And that will leave you with a nice, slick profile of the weld. So welding SMAW in a horizontal and vertical up have two different techniques, you know, because they are two different positions. You know, a horizontal is more of a dragging technique, as the vertical up is a more about pushing.
so now we got all the outside of the plates welded on all four corners. What we're doing next is, like I said, I'm gonna knock the high spots off this, make it real nice and smooth, put a little V groove in it, and, and weld, weld the beams together. So you see the V groove, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna weld it up. And then what I'm gonna do after I weld it up, I'm gonna hit with a grinder and then prep this service surface put my wheel on there so welding smaw is about melting the rod to the metal with travel speed and motion you need to manipulate the puddle to make the weld wide enough to adjoin both pieces But before I put the wheel on it, I'm gonna prep the edges and knock that galvanize off because it welds a lot better without that galvanize. And then of course, I'm just gonna tack it up. I'll take the wheel off and then I'll proceed to welding it out. I'm on. So as you can see, we got it all cleaned up. I've been in CWI for seven years, and I like to see nice, clean welds. I don't like to see a bunch of BBs and all that stuff. That's why I said the chisel right there is a structural welder's buddy right there. That'll knock them BBs off. And I like it wire wheeled, cleaned up. It's got a little blemish in it or something. I like to hit it with a grinder, make it look very presentable, just like this weld does. The profile looks really good. And that's what I'm looking for when I'm, a, when I'm doing the CWI thing. But I'm not doing the CWI thing right now. I'm doing a little welding. So it goes hand in hand to me. Anyways, you can see we haven't put the wheel back on. We're waiting for this to cool off. We got all the other wheels on. All this work's done on, the, on this side. So what I'll do now is I'll take a cutting wheel and cut off all the temporary steel and grind it down real nice and smooth where it looks presentable. So as you can see, we got the main frame and the dolly wheels off the table because that side's done. So now all we got to do now is take the grinder like we did on the bottom, put a V-groove, 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 weld it out, then lay it out for our uprights. And that's what I'm going to start on next. All right, thanks for watching part one of the material rack. Stay tuned for part two when I wrap it up. And remember, if anybody doesn't remember, this month is National Welding Month. So join us here at Weld.com for new educational videos where we explore innovations in the industry and help you learn while you earn. I like that, earn while you learn. So if you like what you saw, hit the like button and subscribe to Weld.com. See you on the next one.